Hey guys, what is up? I'm Wiesna, and as always, we're gonna be checking out True Sound Studios. Let's go. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Okay, so here is the entire look at True Sound Studios. If you guys don't know, this is actually a converted garage, and we turned this into a full-time, full production recording studio. And essentially, this is where this is where I live for most of the day and most of the week. So if we start over here by the front door, uh, this is a steel door. We got my skateboards. Um, we got some guitar hangers to obviously hang guitars on. Um, a coat rack. And then business cards and like places to put flyers for bands and artists about upcoming shows and whatever. And obviously very important. We have fire detection alerts, whatever. Uh, link to the security system so the place doesn't burn down. If it does, at least I'll know about it. Okay, so let's start over here. These are my main speakers. These are Dyn Audio BM6A speakers. Absolutely love these things. Um, they I've used them 98% of the time. They are the speakers that I use in every mix and recording and tracking session. Uh, some other speakers that I do use though are these Polk Audio speakers. Now these are more like stereo speakers, home theater speakers, but I do like to listen through the mix with them, you know, to check the mix. This is like a single speaker mono cube thing um, that I'll check mixes through that. Behind the console, got a couple Infinity speakers here that I'll also listen to the mix through just to give the final, final listen. So if we start over here, this is the main monitor. I do all the editing through. It's a 42 inch TV. And over to my right is a 24 inch widescreen. And really, as you can see here, it's just really for the, the mixer, the fader in the DAW. And also if I need to like look at something in detail, I'll bring it over to this monitor. Otherwise, that is the main monitor. Uh, up top is the whole security system. That's actually me filming right there. <laughs> uh, that is the driveway cam. Uh, that is inside of our house because people use the bathroom in there. There's no bathroom in here. Um, and then the vocal booth. And then you can actually change these cameras. There's three more cameras uh, for some other things that uh, like guitar cabs and things like that. So the console, the centerpiece of the studio is an Allen & Heath 40 channel GL4000. Um, we have a total of 40 inputs, 40 analog inputs. Um, this is the summing side, so essentially everything comes from the DAW and comes into the console over here. Um, these 24 channels are all the input. Think of them as like 24 channel strips. Um, that It's pretty much how I use these 24. So, you know, we got drums, guitar, bass, vocals, stuff like that happens over here. If you guys want to see how I use all this gear, there's another video that I will link in the description of this video and it will be at the end of this video and it'll show you guys how I essentially have all this hooked up and use it in the DAW world. So in the center here, this is the whole busing section for the console. It's also how I control all the speakers, um, route things to the auxes and all the metering. And if you look on top of the console, this is actually a TOA 16 channel metering system. And that's only because the Allen & Heath only has four segment LEDs. And so I bought this to just help me out just to be able to see the signal better coming out of the console. On top is an Audioscape bus compressor. This is like an SSL clone style bus compressor. Love this thing. It ends up on just essentially every single mix, every single track that I do. Uh, I got a little monitor over here to see how warm it is, humidity. That's the talkback mic. And then on the top to the left of the console, we have a charger for the mouse. Um, this is old. This is a tone port, a line six tone port. Sometimes I actually still use this um, if we don't want to set up like a full guitar rig just to do some rough guitar sounds. Over here, this is the Waves guitar. It's essentially a, an impedance matching uh, DI box. This is the controller for the ISO cab. It actually moves microphones around inside of it. Got the iRig Pro Duo, 
a candle. And in front of the console is the SoftTube Console 1. Absolutely love this thing. If you guys don't know about this, check it out. It's essentially a hardware controller for their plugin. Amazing, amazing sounding, functional, just love it. That's why it's in the center of the console here. It just couldn't go wrong with this thing. Such a great deal. Over here to have a little bit of control inside the DAW, I got the Personas fader port. And then if you pull this open, uh, the keyboard obviously to control the computer, um, a mouse with a whole bunch of programmable buttons on it. I love this thing, it's great. You can program all these different buttons and switches and things. Uh, the little producing area. Underneath is this tray that pulls out and pretty much it's a whole bunch of uh, remotes where I put my keys, pens for me, chargers, tuners. You know, just a whole bunch of little things that I just often need when I'm recording or transferring files or something like that. Uh, this is obviously an Artura little mini lab just for keys. The Akai, uh, obviously use that for drums. And then buried over here is a little USB hub. And there's actually another USB hub to the right of the console for some more gear. Obviously a clock, a switcher for like uh, the aux cable so that you can listen to obviously your phone through you know the big boy speakers um over here is the elisa's trigger uh, i bought this thing and i honestly i've used it once and it didn't really work out too well um it was just a it was a really good deal so i bought it and yeah i don't really use it but uh, one of these days maybe i'll get around to using it so over here to the right of the console up top, we have two SSL AlphaLink uh, converters. So this handles all of the inputs and outputs from the DAW to the console. Uh, the top one here has 16 inputs and four outputs. The bottom one has four inputs and 16 outputs, giving me a total of 20 ins and 20 outs. Um, and it is all clocked through the Apogee Big Ben which is uh, an amazing clock. Up top here is just a controller, essentially just an on and off switch for some other gear. Uh, LED lights, the metering system, talkback mic, uh, that's actually for the reverb. I don't know why that's not labeled. <laughs> uh, the BPM helper is something I built for drummers. The Dyn Audio speakers when I do, um, I turn them off when I have, when I do my tutorial videos. Monitors for the security system, a mic mover for the ISO cab. Right below that is a power conditioner, and then obviously the Apogee Big Ben. Here we have the Lexicon, the MPX100, and really I just use this reverb. Um, it's mainly just for vocalists, just so they can hear some reverb in their headphones, but I have found lately I did start using it a little bit more on mixes. This is my parallel compression chain. It is a BBE. 362 Sonic Maximizer to add a obnoxious amount of bass and treble. And then below that is the DBX 266XL compressor to add a ton of attack to uh, the parallel compression channel. And then right below that is my homemade API 10 channel summing mixer. I built this whole thing from scratch. It's got API op amps in it. It has Jensen transformers and some German transformers. Each channel you can actually pan and have gain control. There's a signal limit on there. The master section, which tells you essentially how much output you're gonna send back to the DAW. This thing is really amazing. I just don't really have a use for it right now because I sum everything through the console. So as of right now, this thing just kinda of is just chilling here, um, reminding me to hook this up one day. Uh, below that, um, what I did is I took a distortion pedal, a guitar distortion pedal, turned it into a rack form with some transformers, uh, run it through like some crappier microphones to get some fun, fun distorted sounds. Uh, you can turn it on and off, distortion. But essentially this is just a guitar distortion pedal transformed into a piece of rack gear to use on vocals. Below that is a JBL frequency dividing network and this essentially just cuts off 80 hertz. It sends everything above 80 hertz to the main speakers and then everything below 80 hertz comes on over to my custom made dual 12 inch sealed 800 watt subwoofer. Um, this thing is in a sealed box so that it's super accurate. Um, it's got enough power. Those are EAW drivers in there. 
Um, a great subwoofer. I really, out of all the things that I've built, this is probably the thing I'm most proud of. I really, really like that subwoofer. So below the JBL is a Apex four channel gate. Um, I can't really say I use this too much anymore. I used to use it on like uh, really distorted guitars to cut out some of the junk noise in between. But uh, yeah, I had to send away the power supply for this. So currently it's not being in use. Um, here we got another BBE Sonic Maximizer. And I will run this through the guitar chain if I need a little bit more brightness out of guitars. Um, I will use this. And then last on here is just a patch bay, an XLR patch bay. Just to patch in a few things. We got some line stuff. You can patch in 39 and 40 to the console. Base for like DI. Another output from the console. And then finally an input for when I do all my videos. So below this rack, is both power supplies. I have a redundant power supply. Essentially, I'm always using this one, and this is backup just in case this power supply goes. So I never ha essentially have to have downtime in the studio. Uh, next to here is an infrared heater. Essentially, it heats the entire control room all winter long in cold, cold Buffalo. So if we move over to the left of the console, up top here is an Elto real-time analyzer. It's kind of hard to see those LEDs moving right now in this bright room, but this is a analyzer. So essentially I can see the frequencies show up on here. If I need to like scoop out some bad frequencies, maybe in guitar or drums while I'm tracking right below that is a Trident S 20. These are like solid state, super, super clean preamps. And the reason I have these is because the first 24 channels on this console, I modded with, a like Neve 1073 style preamp. So it has a lot of color on it. And these preamps are just super, super clean, uh, especially when you, you know, you don't want any color on whatever you're recording. And then we got two power conditioners. Below that is eight channels of API 550A EQs. Now, these were actually fully damaged. Uh, they got dropped at some live venue, live, somebody was recording a live band and the whatever, it got broken. I bought them fairly inexpensively, flipped them all, um, had to buy new face plates. As you can see, they're currently 950, 950A plates. Um, somebody was selling uh, eight of these on eBay, so I obviously had to buy them. Um, I modded four of them. They have four different transformers in them, so you can kind of get a little different sound, but these end up on essentially everything I record. Below that is my collection of DBX products. I love these compressors. I got five DBX 160X compressors. Um, I'm using them on main vocal, backup vocal, acoustic guitar, bass, mono, which is the return from the console. Uh, kick and snare are actually DBX 160A compressors. Then we have a 563. This is a essentially like a noise silencer type thing. It reduces noise. I use this when I do the tutorial videos. And then a DBX 163X compressor, which I also use on that same vocal chain. And last is another BBE product. Uh, this is the 482i. And the only reason I bought this is because I really like Blackbird Studios and they use one of these on kick and snare, and that's what I'm using it for while I'm tracking drums. Um, I'm running it for uh, kick drum and snare drum only. And then below that is a DBX patch bay, just to patch in obviously some of this gear. So below this rack is just some home theater gear. This actually runs the speakers that are on top of the console, the Polk audios, and also the ones that are behind the console. I've got a five disc CD changer and an EQ that maybe one of these days I'll set up. But um, it's really just to, you know, kind of emulate the home theater system here in the studio. Okay, so to the left of the console, this green door is actually how you get into the storage room and the live room. And then we have an air conditioner. This is actually the mic I use when I do the tutorials. True sound sign. Then we have like an old reel to reel tape machine. This is a quarter inch tape machine. Uh, in this drawer, we got a whole bunch of tools. Um, down here is some vinyls uh, interface I don't use. Uh, in this drawer, 
got some electronics that, you know, I may or may not use. Pretty much doesn't get really used much. That's why they're in there. Uh, down here, a whole bunch of reel-to-reel -reel tapes for that tape machine. Over here, we got uh, just a little tenant speaker, uh, just in case people want to jam in the control room, which doesn't happen much. <laughs> and then just a printer, a couple extra hard drives. Uh, this is an old air organ. Um, occasionally I use this. It doesn't get um, used too often, but it does have some cool like buttons that you press and it does full chords. Um, <clears throat> Very unique sounding, <laughs> let's put it that way. Uh, this is a Black Star amplifier. This is the HT Club 50. Um, once again, my fourth Sonic Maximizer. Uh, this runs through the effects loop of here. Really kind of like this combo together. It really does sound good. Um, up top is this a Behringer tuner. Can't say this thing is too reliable, um, unfortunately. Uh, often used like a little snark tuner. Um, in here, got some capos, a jar of picks. This is a this is a little Esteban amplifier, um, which is kind of fun to get like some really thin guitar tones out of. This is actually a watt meter that I run through the Black Star because I run this um, through a ISO cab often, and this way I know how much signal I'm putting out to make sure that we're pushing the amp hard enough. Just a little speaker. Um, to, is really for this amplifier um, that we'll use together. Just see a little three inch speaker to get that thin guitar tone. Over here, this is uh, my camera bag and camera. But in these bins, these are a whole bunch of cables. So we got a whole bunch of chargers, guitar stuff, pedals, power supplies for guitar pedals, uh, guitar straps, RCA cables, don't really use those much, power supply cables, uh, all USB cables for computer related stuff. These are a whole bunch of adapter cables for pretty much anything you'll need in a studio. Uh, more adapter cables. These are like TRS and XLR adapter cables though. Uh, and here are just some stuff. This is a bunch of meters and extra wire, you know, to kind of fix stuff if things get broken label makers and finally business cards and cds and that is my old studio that's my previous studio so over here we have two couches obviously this is directly behind the console um, these are memory foam they also turn into beds and then it's got a couple little end tables you know f tissues um, this is kind of like my conversation piece uh, got this like old telephone now in the back here, that is a three foot thick bass trap. Um, and that really helps eat up a lot of the low end, especially that, that subwoofer produces. Now these green slats, everyone asked me, it's a cool design, but I wanna show you, let's see if you guys can see the angles on here. So this one's pretty much flat. This one's a little bit, this one's really sharp. This one's really sharp the other way. So all of these have different angles on them and it is known as an acoustic diffuser. Now, yes, I cut them at different lengths to make it look a little nicer, but this was a huge pain to build. Um, I also obviously put LED lighting on the top and bottom of them uh, just to make it look really nice, especially when it's dark in here and we're just really trying to create a mood. But these acoustic diffusers took me almost a week to build and paint and cut. It was a huge nightmare. I hope I never have to take them down. So the entire studio has all these black walls and these black walls is actually all fabric. Now what's behind the fabric is what matters even more. It is all acoustic insulation. There is different thicknesses and densities of insulation. And what it does is it makes all of these walls, it turns these into acoustic panels. So what all these acoustic panels do is it turns this garage into a suitable space to mix and record and deliver a good product that my clients expect. Now, including the acoustic treatment that is around the entire room, there's also acoustic panels on the ceiling, over the console, and in all the back corners and all the major areas where any reflection would happen off of this ceiling. 
Okay, so finally moving on, next to the couch is a dorm size refrigerator, a whole bunch of paper and pens so people can write and jot things down and lyrics and things like that. Uh, garbage, that little hole is the recycling, uh, utensils, a microwave, and finally the coffee maker. So one of the things that probably people notice the most about the studio is all the LED lighting. So the entire studio is lit with 16 color LEDs. So you can really change the look of the studio, um, the feeling, the vibe of the studio really easily. Some clients want it really dark and chill, and some people want it brighter, some people want to feel a little happier. And very simply, you can go ahead and change the color of the studio, the light that projects on the console, and really change the mood in this room super easy. You can also have a dance party in here if you wanted to. So if you guys like this video, consider subscribing and hit that like button. Follow us on Instagram for daily posts. You can find the beats that I make right here at the studio on our SoundCloud page. True Sound Studios also mixes and masters your tracks. So once again, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm Wiesna, we're at True Sound Studios, and True Sound Studios is in your ears.